Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber and in this series we have been putting together a model from start to finish in Blender, getting it all ready to import into Unity. In this video we're going to be finishing everything up, showing you how to export your model and getting it absolutely ready to go into Unity. We'll go over eye tracking and visemes, combining meshes, all of the above. So if you're ready, let's get started. So far on our model, we have everything pretty much set up. So the last step that I want to do is just turn everything on, all of the different items that I have so far. It doesn't matter if they're overlapping. That's totally okay. We're going to be fixing that later in Unity anyway. So I'm going to make sure that everything is in here. And I'm going to go through and do a final check of all of my materials and everything to make sure that everything is named correctly. So I'm going to start at the top and make sure that the name of the material matches the name of the object. So my bikini matches, yes. The body matches, yes. And the skin, I actually want to have that be lowercase. Boxers looks good. Choker and the metal, perfect. Ears and metal, hair, head, nails. And if you have questions about any of these, you can always go back and look at previous videos where we set all these up and imported them all and went over each and every material and how we got them the way that they are. So feel free to check those out if you have any questions about any of the materials or the objects that we've imported so far. And I'm just editing the names of all of my materials because once I import them into Unity, I want them to be perfectly aligned and I want them to be really easy to find and really easy to edit. Okay, so it looks like all of my materials are perfect and set up. So now I have to decide what I want to be able to toggle on and off as an object. So I'm going to select everything that's going to go on my body that I'm not going to toggle on and off at all. So I'm going to select my body. I'm going to select the hair and the head and the nails. And I'm pretty sure everything else I want to be available as a toggle. So I'm going to make sure that as I control click all of the items that I want to join together, that my body is the one that is the light blue and all the rest are dark blue. And then I'm going to hover my mouse in this area, not in this area, in the main area, and I'm going to click control J and that's going to join all of those pieces together onto the body. So now when you look at the body, it has all of the materials from my other items that I merged together with it. So we have one, mesh now, but we have all of these materials that are from all the different pieces of the avatar. And I'm the kind of person who really likes my body to be at the very top of the armature and it goes in alphabetical order. So I'm actually going to change this bikini to panty set and then I can still leave the bikini material name because I'll know what that means. And that way the panty set is just not at the very top. I like to have my body in capital at the very top and all of the things that I want toggled in Unity left underneath it. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can have objects to toggle on and off in Unity. This is not the most optimized way to do it, but it is the easiest way to edit textures, to edit materials. When you sell your model, it is very, very easy for other people to find where you have things and to edit them. So this is the way that I like to do it. It does leave a lot of more meshes because each one of these is an individual mesh that will be imported. So it makes your file size slightly bigger, but at this point, I'm okay with that. Now that I've joined together everything that I want joined and everything is on in the viewport, I'm going to go ahead and start pose mode and just double check and make sure that everything moves the way that I want it to. Everything is not clipping through the body. Things are working out just fine. And you can always come back and change this later if you find an error in Unity because the way that we are exporting the model and the way I will show you in later videos how to use it in Unity, you will be able to come back and fix some things if it's broken without having too much trouble. So it looks like everything is working just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and stop pose mode. That was a good test for me. Make sure you save your files periodically, especially in Unity. In Blender, it's still a good idea to save. Even though there's autosave, it's still a good practice to just continuously click save so that you have the most up-to-date version saved in your file. Next, you want to go onto your head and I'm going to click my armature and click tab for edit. And I'm going to make sure that my eye bones are named correctly. So I'm going to go into this little bone properties at the bottom here and it should be I underscore L just like how this is. And then on the right one, it should be I underscore right. So this is absolutely correct. This is how it should be. 
And now we're going to start pose mode. So I'm going to roll my eyes around a little bit and make sure that they are attached to those bones, which they are. And I'm going to stop pose mode. And now we can set up our eye tracking. So I'm going to toggle down in the cats plugin. I'm going to toggle down eye tracking. And it's asking me what mesh are your eye balls on? And I'm going to say they're on the body and then select the bone that is your head. So it's already selected as head and then left eye and right eye are already selected. If they're not already selected, you can just go in here and just choose which one they are. So in this case, blink left, I'm going to have to choose blink left, which is right here and then blink right. And these should be on any head that you would have imported. Every avatar head that is worth their salt has blink left and blink right and probably a bunch of other shape keys. So just find those in your list. Sometimes it's named a little differently, like right blink or left blink. And I leave my lower lids as basis. I don't worry about those at all. So now that I have all of this set up, I'm going to click create eye tracking and then it will pop back up and it will show start eye testing. And once you click that, it will make all of your other bones invisible so you can see the eyes very clearly. And then you can use these little sliders to make sure that your eyes are moving down and up. They are and left and right. They are. And then you can test your blink strength and that's working just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and stop eye testing. And now my eyes are ready to be imported into Unity. Now I want to make sure that all of my visemes are correct. So I'm going to go to the visemes tab. I'm going to choose the mesh that my lip blend shapes and shape keys are on. And for me, that's on my body because I always connect my head and my body together. If your body and your head were separate, this would be head. So it would be whatever the shape keys for your visemes, which are your lip sync animations, what they will be on. So then you just select the blend shape for each one. So viseme AA, find AA, and then O, and then CH. Now that those are all there, you just click create visemes and you can do this as many times as you want. It will overwrite any other visemes you have and make sure that everything is set up perfectly the way that it should be. And that is all there is to visemes and you don't have to do anything else on that front. Now with my eye tracking set up, everything tested, everything ready to go, all of my materials set up, everything joined, I'm going to make sure absolutely that my armature right here is just called armature. Make sure it does not have any other name. This is the standard. Just make sure that it's called armature and that the little green one is called armature. If it's not, rename it and make sure that everything is on. All of your eyeballs are on, ready to go. It looks perfect. So now I'm going to click on File, Export, and I'm going to click on FBX. And then I'm going to name this the name that I want my FBX. And I'm going to make sure that my selected objects is unchecked. That means it will export everything in my entire project and it will not have to worry about selecting all the objects in order for them to be exported. Everything else you can leave just as is and click export FBX. This might take a minute. You can kind of test by scrolling in and out to make sure as soon as you can scroll in and out, that means your FBX was successfully exported. And there you go. You have a fully functional FBX. In your project, I'm going to go ahead and take my original project, create a new folder in this folder and call this source so that I know that I'm not using any more of these objects. I'm going to uncheck my blender file and I'm also going to uncheck my final tutorial model FBX and I'm going to drag everything else in source. So now I just have one FBX in my main folder. I have all the textures that are linked to that FBX right here and it's ready to go into Unity. If you're interested in watching all of the other steps that got us to this point, feel free to check out the rest of the videos in this series. Leave any and all questions down in the comments or feel free to join my discord, which is linked in the description. Thank you so much for joining me in this series. I've had a lot of fun and I hope that you've learned a lot. I hope you have an amazing day. I love you all so much and I'll see you in the next one.